So last night was the big football game last night as England took on Belgium in the Football World Cup. I, for one, was quite frankly excited and quite looking forward to this game because Belgium is a good quality opposition and a very good side in football. England have shown very good and class form even though they've been against rubbish opponents, putting away Tunisia in a very nail-biting game, 2-1. All coming off way of Harry Kane with two goals. Not to mention Kane's last-minute header to actually head us home to win the game against Tunisia. Then going on to pace Panama, which we had a very good, strong, convincing game and play. We actually started to put them away. Again, Panama's not a good side. But it, we started to put them away, put the drill on, put the pressure on, thumped home five goals before half time, scoring an extra goal in the second half. But but then we just totally took our foot off the pedal and stopped driving home. We should have easily and very convincingly stuck at least ten goals on Panama in that game. It should have just been that high. It should have just been finished ten one. That goal we practically gave to him as well, but we need to be putting away any opponents you put in front of you, good, bad, whatever. You still have to go on, game face on, game head on, drive them home, put them away. Getting on to last night's game against Belgium, all this talk, all the build up, everything else leading up to this game was oh, well, we're going to play to come second in our group. We're currently top. Only because of bookings, we're equal on points and and goals scored with Belgium. But we have one less booking than Belgium. But we want to lose this game because in the quarterfinals, we would meet Brazil. We'll have an easy last 16, round of 16, and then we get Brazil in the next round. But oh no, nobody waited to face Brazil. And there was all talks about making wholesale changes, changing out the whole team, putting, um, taking off Harry Kane and a lot of the other good players that was doing very good and highly performing. Again, Harry Kane on form, on his on a mission now. He's going for the golden boot. He scored two goals in the first game and he's got his hat trick in the in the second game against Panama. So that's three, four, five, five goals. Five goals for Harry Kane straight off in the tournament. He's ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo, which is an amazing achievement because even if we got knocked out against Brazil in the quarters, Harry Kane could have still got the golden boot because no doubt about it, on, on a good day, on a good team against Belgium, he could and should have been banging in at least one goal. Let's drive it home to six, boys. We even had the whole talk from Gareth Southgate saying he would not be going out to lose this game. He still wants to win this game. He's welcome any more challenges. And yet, as soon as it came to game day, he made eight changes. He made eight changes to the team. Eight changes to a winning formula, a winning squad. Who does that? Really? That is just asking for something. I wouldn't mind personally. If you make at least one or two changes, just as maybe save a player's legs, change a different way of attack by having an extra bit of flair or something else that a player might give you on the pitch as a tactical advantage. But he, no, he made eight changes. Now, I know Belgium made nine, so it was practically two second teams going at it. But really and truly, if we had our main proper team out, Harry Kane, Jesse Lingard, and Cole all out on the field, um, Stones, we would have been doing so much better. We would have played so much better. We went on to win this game. I mean, to lose this game. We lost this game 1-0. 1-0. At the start of the game, we didn't show any heart. We didn't show any attack. We didn't go straight after the goal and start trying to play the brand of footy that we put on Panama or Tunisia. We totally came off the gas. We wanted to just to play the ball around. We took the ball back straight from kickoff, straight back to our goalkeeper, and let our goalkeeper kick it back out. There was no form of attack. It was just, we're going to mess around, we're going to knock the ball around in our own half, and then we're going to come up and take these half-hearted chances. We had one real big big chance in the game, where the goalkeeper came out, and we just totally missed the goal by a mile. It was practically an open goal. 
to to be honest with you, this was just sh shameful. This was diabolical. This whole talk of, you know, not wanting to win the game and to avoid Brazil. Well, obviously, we got it. We got the easier side of the draw, but we've got a harder game in the first round. If we'd won that game, we topped the group, we take on Japan in the last 16. Now, not just in Japan, but then we do have a higher chance and a higher percentage against Japan. Even though Japan beat Colombia in their group. They took Colombia to, to a bit of a slaughterhouse to get, you know, Colombia picked up the early red card and Japan took advantage on that. So they, are, they have caused a big upset in this tournament. But there's still nothing to be afraid of if you're a side like England, surely, right? But we still gave them that opportunity. And we still gave them Belgium because we didn't want to have Belgium. We just didn't want to be Belgium on the day. It's it's disgusting. So now we end up with Colombia, a bloody good team if you ask me. They're going to put us under some pressure and, and they're, they're going to be on their game when they play us, I'm telling you. They're not going to hold back. They'll be looking for an upset. We'll still be the favourites going into it, but... Boy, oh boy, oh boy, please, please do not underestimate Colombia. They can be dangerous. Let's have a look at the table now so see how where things are. Uruguay would be taking on Portugal. France have Argentina. Brazil have Mexico. Belgium and Japan. All really the best sides are on that other side of the table. There is no sit pretty much challenge sitting on the other side. Apart from Spain, the team I'm actually currently backing to win this World Cup, actually, it was either Spain or Germany. Well, I was wrong with Germany. We all know what happened to them. They're out. Croatia versus Denmark. Sweden versus Switzerland. And us versus Colombia. Now, we're going to have a tough game, as I said, against Colombia. Switzerland, Sweden. Pretty much see that going to 50-50, really. Again, Croatia, Denmark. I see Croatia beating Denmark there. And Spain, Russia. Again... Uh, I pretty much think the host may be going out. Spain probably topping that. So Spain, Croatia in the next round. If we're lucky and we manage to scrape through Colombia with our supposed to be fully fit side now, given that, we'll be taking on probably Switzerland or Sweden. Meaning we're still going to meet Spain within the semis if we were to make it that far. So really and truly, there, there's no difference there. There's no difference here. We get through the quarters, probably against Sweden and Switzerland. What we should be doing them. But then it's Spain in the semi, so we haven't avoided no big game. And even though Spain haven't been all that and they've been under pressure and they've not played so well, they come. F they had an amazing, great game against Portugal. If you minus out the Cristiano Ronaldo penalty, which he's always got to bang in, and the odd free kick. I mean, it's Ronaldo, man. You know, he's bound to knock in a free kick and a penalty. It's, it's him, you know. And still, you know, if we avoid all the other games, we avoid Brazil, we, France and Argentina, who's playing each other. That's a massive, huge game right there. Uruguay, Portugal. You know, Uruguay can bring something to this tournament, and they've already shown that. Belgium as well. Belgium's a threat. And Belgium go quite far, depending, again, if they meet Brazil in the next round. Brazil has been on fire. Don't take nothing away from Brazil. They're, they're quality side. But this whole thing of ducking, just ducking Brazil, just totally winds me up. It's, it's so annoying. Why do it? It's not worth it. Really, guys. You know, we, we've put ourselves actually in a quite a difficult situation. You can call it the easier way. But to be honest, I'd rather have Japan. We haven't won a knockout game in something like 16 years. And we're taking on Colombia. I want to just, let's actually beat Belgium. Let's full side beat Belgium. Beat Japan. At least you've won a knockout game, even if we were to go out to Brazil in the next round. I mean, it's truly disgusting. I expect better. I wanted better. You know, people started to believe. We eat two opposition. They were rubbish. We had the faith. Everyone had. We went into the competition. Everyone's. Oh, we ain't gonna do well. They're unexperienced. They're uncapped. They haven't been around. They're young. We beat two rubbish sides, and all of a sudden it's. We're gonna win the World Cup. Well, I tell you what. The way we're going right now, it don't look it. Now I don't want to keep knocking England because we've done fantastic. We're taking the wins. I don't care who we play. 
I mean, a win's a win. I mean, as long as you're winning, you're going to win this tournament. But for me, if we're going to win a heavy tournament, a big tournament about the World Cup, I'd rather go through the big guns. I'd rather take on the likes of Brazil, Spain, Argentina, just to win this World Cup. I mean, the bigger the oppo, the better the success, right? Guys, guys, do you have your thoughts below? Let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.